video, we are going to explore the fluid imbalance of hypovolemia. Remember, when you see hypo, we are speaking of a deficit. So let's get started with fluid volume deficit or hypovolemia. Hypovolemia, which means the low vascular volume, especially pertaining to the plasma, which is the fluid that all of the blood cells are bathed in. This can be caused by gastrointestinal losses, including vomiting, nasogastric suctioning, or diarrhea, or abnormal skin fluid losses, which can include diaphoresis or profuse sweating, abnormal renal losses, such as diuretic therapy, diabetes insipidus, renal disease, adrenal insufficiency, or osmotic diuretics hemorrhage or bleeding, movement of fluid into the third space, which is also known as third spacing syndrome, which is when the fluid goes into a non-functional place, like the legs, abdomen, or extremities, dehydration, and enteral feeding without sufficient water intake. So let's look at the clinical manifestations, also known as signs and symptoms. With fluid volume deficits in the vital signs, you could see tachycardia, which means elevated pulse above 100 beats per minute. You could also see a thready pulse and orthostatic hypotension, which is low blood pressure upon standing, dignipnea or rapid breathing, and hypoxia, which is when the body is not receiving enough oxygen. With neuromuscular changes in the neuromuscular system, you could see dizziness, syncope, which means fainting or short loss of consciousness, confusion, weakness, and fatigue. Respiratory signs and symptoms include an increased breathing rate, and gastrointestinal symptoms can include thirst, a dry furrowed tongue, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, and acute weight loss. Signs and symptoms of renal impairment could include oliguria, which means low urine output. In infants, this could be less than one milligram per kilogram per hour, and in children, this could be less than 0.5 mLs per kilogram per hour. And in adults, this would be less than 500 milliliters of urine in a 24-hour period. Other signs and symptoms can include diminished capillary refill, dry, scaly skin, dry mucous membranes, poor skin turgor, sunken eyeballs, flattened neck and veins. Laboratory results could include an increased hematocrit, which you will see abbreviated as HCT, with normal values ranging in adult mills of about 40 to 55%, depending on your facility, and in women, about 36 to 48%, depending on your facility. Other laboratory results could include an increased serum osmolarity, increased urine-specific gravity, and increased serum sodium. Nursing management of fluid volume deficit or hypovolemia could include monitoring daily weight and vital signs, including the temperature, heart rate, and blood pressure, assessing the skin turgor, monitoring fluid intake and output, monitoring laboratory findings, monitoring the level of consciousness, and maintaining client safety, administering oral and intravenous fluids as indicated, frequent mouth care, and implementing measures to prevent skin breakdown, which means encouraging the client to change positions slowly from side to side or standing, and encouraging your client to avoid drinking fluids that contain alcohol or caffeine. This increases the fluid excretion. Complications. Hypovolemic shock is a life-threatening condition when you lose more than 20% of your body's blood or fluid supply. The word shock in medical terms means that the organs and tissues are not receiving adequate blood flow. This can cause organ failure due to insufficient blood supply. This is, again, a life-threatening medical emergency. Now, let's go over some NCLEX-style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Question number one. Which of the following is an isotonic solution that expands the extracellular fluid volume and can be used in diabetic ketoacidosis metabolic alkalosis, and hypercalcemia. A, 3% sodium chloride. B, 0.9% sodium chloride. C, dextrin 40% normal saline. Or D, 0.45 normal saline. So in this question, there's actually a huge hint in the words of the question, and that is that they're looking for an isotonic solution. In the main introduction video, we learned that the word isotonic means that it is the same concentration 
of solutes as the blood. And in these answer options, there is only one isotonic solution, and that is normal saline of 0.9%, which is option B. It can also be called normal saline, and it is used in hypovolemic states. Option D is a hypotonic solution, option A is a hypertonic solution, and option D is a colloid. This question, when you first read it, can be quite intimidating because it brings up medical terminology that you may have just now become familiar with. It also introduces you to a disease process that you may not know the exact treatments for. However, when you read the question, it is asking for which of the following is an isotonic solution. When speaking of isotonic solutions, they are referring to the solute concentration in the human body. There is 0.9% of sodium, which is the same concentration of the blood. In these answer options, this is the only one that is isotonic. So when you look at the answer options, you will see that only one is not correct, and you do not have to be confused with the other comprehensive treatments of all the disease processes. In option A, 3% sodium chloride, this is a very concentrated solution, much higher than the blood. In option C, dextrin 40% in normal saline, dextrose is a sugar component which is usually given in much less concentration, such as 5% dextrose. So you can see that this liquid is very solute heavy and definitely not an isotonic solution, making this answer option wrong. In option D, 0.45% of normal saline, the normal value of sodium's solute concentration in the blood is 0.9%. So you can see a level of 0.45% is exactly half the normal solute concentration, making this not an isotonic solution, but a hypotonic solution. Solution. However, option B, 0.9% of normal saline is the only isotonic solution mentioned here. Other isotonic solutions can include 5% dextrose in water, lactated ringers, which you will see abbreviated as LR. Lactated ringers contains electrolytes, making the final and correct answer option here B. Question number two. Which of the following blood components is the most administered? A. Fresh frozen plasma B. Packed red blood cells C. Whole blood or D. Platelet concentration Packed red blood cells is the most commonly administered blood product. You will see this abbreviated as PRBCs. They maintain intravascular blood volume, improve oxygen carrying capacity, and oxygen transport to the tissues. In many hypovolemic states, you will see packed red blood cells ordered in order to regain proper fluid volume, making the correct and final answer option here B. The other answer options, option A, fresh frozen plasma, this could also be administered if indicated. However, the first choice of fluid replacement in a critical condition is packed red blood cells. In option C, whole blood, this type of transfusion is rarely done. Instead, you usually just give the components that the patient needs such as the red blood cells. And in option D, platelet concentration. Platelets in a large number can cause clots. If you were to give a patient who already does not have enough fluid volume, you could cause some serious harm. So of course this answer option is wrong. Stay tuned until the next video.